ta 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 Welcome back guys. So I'm not 100% done but have a look at this. So first of all, I want to thank you to all of you guys that did comment on the last video and gave me suggestions on, uh, well, how to fix it or basically better main maintenance of uh, the air bearings, etc. So originally my plan was to relap this all around and make a huge mess out of it, but through your comments I maybe found a better solution for now. So a lot of you guys pointed out that this is not really um, a real curvature in here. I think this is just the pivot point from where on it goes like on a straight slope outwards. So through milling that slot I must have released a lot of stresses in the material and when you look at that surface area, I mean, I didn't take off too much, but um, if you consider the bow that is in the air bearing, it does make total sense that it would like pivot around this point and create this motion out of it. So in order to bend that back, um, there were a lot of options available and I originally gone over the machine to like do some straps over the whole Z axis and whatnot but I figured that I do have a lot of space in here so there's the ball screw running and I do have right about 20 mil um, to play with so that's that's plenty and I just built these uh, two standoffs which are also made of brass flats or uh, hex stock to basically get the uh, the temperature elongation the same with this piece and I just checked them through here and kept tweaking these uh, these screws until I got the the best reading out of it and as you saw I do have uh, like 10 micron high on this side but this could be also through the setup and some dust and whatnot. So, but I can see that the curvature in here is basically gone. And I guess we're going to work from that. I do have to remove this scratch either way. So that's what we're going to do today. And I guess from there I will... So first thing I do, I'm confident that these are in a good spot. So I give them a dab of super glue and all these connections so these won't move but they're really stiff in here so I don't um, fear that but I will do anyway. And then we'll remove this scratch and maybe just maybe take a really really fine pass on this surface with some, um, some really fine um, emery cloth. Follow me as I find this stuff all out by myself and maybe at the end we're gonna have a working air bearing or maybe not so I guess there's only one way to find out so for the start um, I tried to remove the big groove with a really small ball nose end mill to get rid of the bulk of the material and I think I'm gonna go one or two mil um, to each side and I don't want this to be ever in contact again with the granite. The granite itself is not like really damaged but um, I think if we can use these 89% of the air bearing it will be fine and we'll leave these 2% uh, out of the game.
So I've worked most of the material out of here. Um, I've been using this, I, I don't really know how to translate that, but I've been using one of these little guys to verify um, the flatness and if I do have anything that's that's prone. As you can see with the light source behind it, you can tell the slightest gaps in the material just as on these grooves. And if we go over here, this is deep enough. Here you can see it's rocking. But the camera does convey not too good. This is like way exaggerated than what I've been seeing. I just don't want to have like um, set this or start lapping this kind of piece and do have a, high, a real high spot in here where you have to remove uh, so much material because it's gonna bear on three points always and if this is gonna be one then you will have one over at the other end of the air bearing which will be um, like getting the rest of all the the forces um, I'm gonna go over this area just a bit more with the grinder and then we'll meet again So at the very first, we're going to prepare some some bluing. Uh, I will use this stuff, and we will get an overview of what is going on in, with this one, and yeah, basically get a rough baseline. So let me apply that on here. So as you can see, and this is also, maybe you can see the scratch pattern. We do have all the sharp edges just contacting, as well as this small point in here. So at the very first, I will take a stone and get over the, the edges to basically get the surface to bear for deburring uh, those delicate parts and you want to put a micro fine bevel or chamfer on a part like this uh, these super finished stones from like honing operations are really handy tip to have um, uh, you can use those like precision ground flat stones for this but uh, since you have that small of a contact area uh, you will um, deform them pretty fast so I like to use these a lot and I've already deburred all of that so you can't really see that but it's a micro fine chamfer around here and I did a bluing again but as you can see I just get a very small contact area around all these these holes so I guess what happened is that over time and uh, like the pressure from tightening these screws the material must have moved inwards and well I decided to give it a test at lapping um, because now I do have at least four resting spots that is uh, all around the part so I don't create these like uh, really high forces at, at, one, at one place. So what I've set up is this really crude and basic um, lapping setup. This is some 1K grit emery cloth and I just taped that to the surface plate that it's not moving. Um, of course you would like to have this to be a lot bigger. This barely fits this part which is not that great to get all these like um, different rotations and strokes in it but that's what I have to work with for right now and we'll see what the difference is so at least my plan is and that's why I was doing the bending up front I don't want to remove a lot of material in here because uh, a lot of you guys pointed out that these uh, 
The depth of these grooves is kind of crucial to the setup and very well planned. So I will try to not take off like more than 10 microns of the whole, um, the whole surface. Um, we'll see how that goes. I think we're going to see, um, around the holes, uh, the, the most of the friction in here. And for this, I will try to do one stroke dry, uh, see what this looks like. And if I'm not, um, okay with this, I will switch to some isopropanol alcohol, but I don't know how this paper will stay up. So, um, I will give it a test, see how these patterns develop and then go back to bluing stage. Interesting. So as you can see, I've made the first one or two strokes and I'll get you uh, mounted for the next one uh, for sure. And I don't really took off that much. Uh, this was maybe 30 to 40 seconds of, of action. And as you can see, um, we kind of develop a few spots in here. So, and as we expected, there are three of them, and like here, this can be seen the best. So there's this big pile, this big pile, and everything around this groove. So this is basically what, uh, what at least I have expected. I was doing a few numbers up in here uh, to to verify um, where the bows are, and I always saw that there was some kind of a bow in here. Um, which we're seeing right here and also the deformation this has caused is going uh, way past the other points. So if this part would be smaller or this surface would be bigger, I would certainly go like in figure eight moves and do way more um, yeah, like rotations of it. But in this case, I just have to work with this what I got. So I'm changing um, or flipping it as often as possible. And also I'm just gonna go in this direction because um, this is travel direction and I want to be uh, to have all micro grooves uh, arranged in this direction. Still the same pattern. This hole seems to be quite prone and still this one up there so we'll keep going all right let me get you updated um i've done at around like eight to ten um more rounds of um lapping on the surface plate this is a micron indicator so even touching this setup is like driving me crazy uh, we'll take a sweep across this face. And back here. But this setup isn't as rigid as it has got to be to to do this kind of measurements. But I need the long reach to um, basically be able to measure in the middle of the of the bearing. But if I let everything settle, you can see that pretty much the whole area is going right back to zero. Um, the other side.
Let's go to the middle here. It's pretty much at zero again. And then when we go front to back, you can see that it's raising um, right around that area of, of the groove. So there will be rumble rumble, back to zero, and when we get out of the bearing area, we'll see that this is actually dropping right here. But this doesn't bother me much. Uh, the one thing I have to make a decision on is this area. So even if I tap it, this area is prone like 3 to 4 microns. And this is basically what you see in the bluing as well. But um, I just got into the old video where I was the initial milling on this part and I was measuring the depth of these groove, grooves and they were at about uh, 30 micron. So let's get that back to zero. If I go into that groove you can see um, about 15 microns. Uh, will be maybe a bit more somewhere in between 15 to 20 microns. Okay, so what I have to decide now is if I want to lap this as uh, long as it takes to get rid of the last 4 micron, but maybe even lose even more meat on these grooves. So I have no idea how deep they should be in spec, how the calculations turn out for these parts, and what the actual difference it will make if I go from 30 to like 10 microns. I have no idea. So I'm thinking I might leave this as is it is way better, one order of magnitude better than before. Uh, this was 50 microns high when it did the crash. Now we're talking 4 microns. So I think I will sleep one night over that whole mess here. And, well, make a decision. And now we have to take a look at how we solve this problem here. It surely is a difference if we run brass on granite or brass on brass. So I try to get rid of this as much as possible without damaging the surface below. To do that I acquired some ammonium. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna apply that on a small piece like in the front of the machine um, and have it on there overnight to see if it got any effect on the granite itself. And uh, if that's okay, I will apply this to our damaged spot and see how much of the material I can dissolve out of there. Uh, so since ammonium is kind of a bitch, if you want to do something like this, be sure to wear gloves, um, put on some safety goggles and um, also be cautious with your breathing apparatus. Um, this is some nasty stuff. So in this area I did put on the ammonium. So it's the next morning. I'm gonna see what this looks like. So that's interesting. So as you can see, all the brass is basically gone and this part is like seriously cleaned. But also the, I mean the texture is mostly the same. 
All right, I have processed the granite as well with the ammonium. Actually, most of the brass has come off and we can see what it did to the granite itself, which I guess is visible, but not too bad at all. <clears throat> so as you can see, there is, let me get that somehow focused, a part on top that is visibly damaged. But if I scratch it with a fingernail, I'm not really able to tell any difference. At least I can feel that nothing is prone. So I guess that would be the worst if this is slightly inwards or abraded away. Um, that shouldn't cause too much problems because the whole surface area is still on there and this was, would just be inwards. That shouldn't be a problem. Right here in that um, air bearing you could see that real big booger that uh, was formed in messing, in, in brass. There's this point, it, I think this is where everything stopped and there's still some brass in here. But other than that I think this repair was somehow successful. Still I couldn't find any substance on earth that is able to get rid of these, these permanent markers. When I originally moved this machine back into my old shop, I had to also disassemble the Z-axis to get some proper height um, in the trailer. <clears throat> and the guy that helped me made these two marks where the Z-axis was mounted. <laughs> and up to this point, they stood up to every, every cleaner and stuff I put on here. So maybe I have to get the oxyacetylene torch for them. But okay, we can move on to the next thing. So alright, it's the next morning and I've made a decision. So we're gonna take this as is, um, as you saw the, the measurement on the surface plate. Um, while I was down there I also took the liberty and gave them a quick buff of both um, air bearings from top and bottom just to get rid of, if there were any um, any dents or whatever, to get rid of them. But it just took two or three th strokes to get them really clean. Um, I also did um, clean all these like air outlets with IPA and blew a lot of air through them to not contaminate all the system in here. In terms of this side, I've checked that again with the straight edge and I can see that yes, there's damage, but nothing of that is sitting prone. So I think I may get away with it. Um, I will assemble everything now back to original state and see how this works. If everything turns out good, We'll leave it at that, but I think as soon as we get into another problem with a crash or some some indicating dust on here, I will disassemble this and move to a whole another plan. And I think uh, next time I will be doing some well some some new construction on this and get rid of some of these parts and like do do my own version of how I think it has to be done on this machine with this new with this new application of 3D printing. Yeah, enjoy that and we'll see when everything's together.
All right, we're like 10 minutes into the first real big 3D printing object we'll do. This will be the cover that goes on here eventually. This is pretty much looking like a sweet first layer. Well, I would just let this go, see if the surface, the like bed adhesion is good enough and more importantly, I want to see if the repair job on the bearing has worked. If we got any debris on here and this will be putting on a lot of miles on the machine, so hope this will turn out all right. At least it finished, and that's what I'm uh, most proud of. Because, um, well, this was the first real test after uh, relapping the air bearing. This print was somewhere around four and a half hours, and I can't seem to find any debris, dust, or whatsoever on here. So I guess this was a successful repair job. Um, I'm still not decided if I want to like rip everything apart again just to have a really good look on everything if I had surface contact somewhere um, but I'll do that later on at least uh, all the axes are in perfect working condition and this was the longest print up to now so I guess uh, I can tackle new tasks for the future and be somewhat safe on like reliability What a funny experiment this has been. Let's come to conclusion time. I've put it on the machine. You saw me like trying to bend some of this back and this has also worked quite a bit. You'll see that it is of course far, far, far away from being perfect. I was kind of guessing that this would happen for several reasons. First of all, name a printer where you can safely do this kind of job without lifting. You saw me when I was peeling this off from this glued surface. The adhesion forces were really good and um, that was not why this part was lifting in the first place. That's because you got these sharp corners where you uh, the, the forces are like peaking and then you got this massive massive wall that is just like pulling like a big beam. So I was fully expecting to do I'm quite sure this won't stay on the machine. This has really served as a prototype, just like in every other cases. You um, you get something to hold in your hand, look at like the di dimension, is everything correct? Do I like the looks of it? And 
I can see that all the screw holes are in the right in the right place. I can see that maybe the cutout for the servo could use some one or two millimeters more of clearance to both sides. And well, maybe this serves as a prototype to have that laser cut and uh, bent in like aluminum or stainless steel. I don't know. I've made a lot of progress in terms of machine is running again. It did a four and a half hour print today without any issues. Um, also, I don't have any um, problems with that, like uh, that I should be concerned with the next print going something wrong. Um, that was running like a well-oiled machine, and I hope that we're out of the um, small problems area and finally get to use it. Um, I don't know if we ever come to the point where I don't have to babysit this one and can run completely on its own overnight, but I guess that will take a lot of time from now on. So I don't know if this episode 7 is going to end here or you see something else later on. Um, but this is just the words I got for now. I'm really happy with whatever this is. And I'm quite excited for the future. <laughs>